Welcome to Eat Church Live. Live. I'm Ryan Seacrest. This is Kelly Ripper. Not really. Not really. This is the Eat Church. Hey, Kim. Hi, Kim. And there's Carol. Carol is my old, old friend. <laughs> not that she's not old, old, but we go way back. Stephen. Kim said, Ryan, you look different. <laughs> yeah, I was out for a little bit. You had some work done. With the, yeah, <laughs> had some work done. <laughs> I wanted to look a little more like Rick Manus. Because <laughs> everybody wants to look. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Sandra. Thanks for coming. We're going to have fun tonight. We've got a good topic. I'm excited about this topic because we were on vacation in Yellowstone celebrating our anniversary and birthdays. And mm -hmm. we were really talking about this a lot. Love did love this. Love did this. Love did this. And when we say love did it, we mean God did it. Yeah. Because God is love. Right. Right. So should I go ahead and read our opening scripture? I guess so. Okay. So <clears throat> what I have is John chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. Okay. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. Without him, nothing was made that was made. All things were made through him. This is the same John who tells us later on in his first letter to the churches, um, in John chapter 4, 1 John chapter 4, 8. God is love. Wait, somebody's asking something about Why that. are there so many send a join requests to join your broadcast? Am I on with you? Yeah, Kim. Yeah, you're on, on with there. me. It, that's they're prompting you to invite people. Oh. To send a request. Oh no, that's not right. I mean, it doesn't show up on our end. Yeah, we don't have any qualifications that you have to pass to. to you just look and you're there. Send a join request to join. Hmm. You have joined automatically, yeah. and we're yeah. when you seeing just, your... When you just look at videos. us, you're, you're there. <laughs> That's a little strange. That is strange. It's not, a, uh, it's not an invitation. Send a join request. To join your broadcast. To join your broadcast. I don't know. I, I would we say... We need to, like, do... We need to, like, attend a Facebook Live video. And so see what it's like. We don't attend happening. any Facebook Lives, do we? <laughs> we haven't recently. Zaina says, her and her husband are looking forward to this. Truly, God did this. Our, oh, marriage too was God's idea. So was ours. I totally think the same way. <laughs> I was thinking the same way when you were talking about doing this. As but we were saying, so, so without him, there was nothing made because all things were made through him. And John said in 1 John 4, 8, as you finished the sandwich for me, as I began, the sentence for me, is that God is love. So we could say that nothing was made without him, and he is love. Right. What we, what we know as agape love, not human love, not limited love, mm -hmm. not fickle love, but all 100% committed, absolute love, the kind of love. And the definition, really, the, that makes the difference between agape, the God kind of love, and the human kind of love is that human kinds of love, um, the love for something or someone depends on the quality of the object that is loved. You love a person because there is something good about them. It's not normal for humans to just love a person because they're bad or evil, <laughs> yeah. right? In fact, people struggle with that. Um, it's not, um, if somebody loves a beautiful painting or a song or a beautiful lake or something like that, there is something about that object that, that causes that love to be uh, felt and expressed by you. But with God, it's the other way around. With God, it's not so much the, the, um, the qualities of the object as it is the quality of the one loving. 
it comes from it's it uh, the the quality of that love uh, comes from the quality of the giver, not the mm. quality of the object. Am I saying that? Am I making any any, any sense yeah, there? Yeah, I, I read somewhere or I heard somewhere that the actual definition in the Greek of agape, that it assumes there's a preference, like a divine preference for mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. whatever the object is. It's right. what their, their preference, they're right. preferring. Uh, but, and it comes from, uh, it comes from, it's, it's, initiated by the giver of the love uh, for God so loved the world mm. right when the world and, and and the world is described in different places and we understand this that when we were yet enemies of God while we were sinners uh, you know the list could go on and on but it was it was initiated by the one giving the love it wasn't initiated because we were so good. We were so good that he couldn't help but love us. Yeah, yeah. It was because he was so great yeah. that he couldn't help but love, love us. us. If he didn't, he would cease to be God. Mm. He cannot deny himself. That's why the scripture says, um, even if we are not faithful, yet he still abides faithful, he cannot deny himself. Mm -hmm. or excuse me, even if we are faithless, mm -hmm. he abides faithful because he cannot deny himself. It doesn't stop him from being God. It doesn't stop him from loving us. It doesn't mm. stop the way that he is toward us mm. at all because it has nothing to do with us as the object of that love. It's all based upon the, the greatness of the one that's, that's giving. Um, here's an example that uh, I think illustrates this well. Uh, I've shared this before, but, but some years ago, I got this revelation or this idea that um, whereas I used to tip servers based on their performance, I thought, mm -hmm. I, 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 I was thinking about how God gives based on him, not on our performance. Mm -hmm. So I just decided, mm, I'm changing. I said, I am no longer going to tip someone based on their performance. Mm -hmm. I'm going to based on someone based on my wanting to give. Mm -hmm. Does that, does That's that make good. sense? I was a server, so I know what it felt like really to have your performance always being evaluated and judged and you were always hoping that nothing would go wrong, you know, that, that everything would go smooth. And so the they giving would be... the tip seemed like a grade. In a way. Yeah. But then there were some people where you knew you didn't deserve what they gave and you're just so thankful. <laughs> like, and and what did you think about those people that did that? That gave I thought they were really cool. People, really, really good. good people, really good. Yeah. And that's what happens with us with God when we see how He gives more than actually is given back, or more than would is deserved, at least by our measurements. Um, it makes us think more highly of, of him. him. Yeah, yeah good and point. And that's really what. Uh, uh, grace is all about. Uh, what are people saying here? I don't so, want to get too far ahead. Zaina said, when Abba sees us, I believe he sees the love he has invested in us. <clears throat> yeah. And he sees, he sees all of those things. Cause that's, that's truly what he sees. He sees everything. There's nothing wrong with his eyes. He looks at us and, and loves us. That's mm -hmm. just how great he is. And, and honestly, um, you know, he loved us before we were Christians, mm -hmm. before we received the love poured into our heart by the Holy Spirit of God. He still loved us even then, mm -hmm. before that. And uh, uh, another good thing that we like to talk about is that he doesn't love us for our potential. He doesn't love a future perfected version of us. Mm -hmm. He loves us now. While we were still sinners, he loved us. Right. So... When we talk about love did this. So when we're talking about our salvation, when we're talking about our relationship with God, what did all of this? Love did this. And love made everything. And so like you were talking about, we, we take a, uh, what would you call it? An outdoorsy vacation, a nature vacation. And I would catch you sometimes saying, look, love did that. Mm -hmm. Love did that. You would see this beautiful okay, vista. Okay, I'm going to cry. Because, so we're at Yellowstone, and so you don't know what you're going to see. You don't know what wild animals are going to come across. You don't know what's going to happen. 
And almost immediately, we drive onto the property and there is um, an elk, like four elk, like a family of elk like right this there far from us. on our <laughs> side of a road. Like, it just felt like such a, a loving uh, gift that God gave well, us. There you go. Right? It's because, almost like you could stick your right, stick your arm out and touch them from the car. <laughs> and then, um, you know, even some of the like waterfalls and the 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 different um, what are they called the, the like the geysers, geysers and the streams and all mud, that mud pots and things. You felt like you were honored, like he was showing you a piece of the world that we don't typically get to see here in Florida, and it it felt very loving. Yeah, it felt feels very loving that God would create something so beautiful, amazing, mesmerizing. And when you see it, it blesses you and you even feel blessed to see it. Mm -hmm. And honestly, the more you become aware of the goodness of God, this at least this has been true in my life, you notice everything or you notice more of everything. It's like you don't have to go up into the great you know the 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 big sky west you can you can you know go outside and see a tree in your in your neighborhood yeah. and look at that and what and and love did that what caused all this life only love could do this sure. only love could give life only love could make something beautiful and i love this and we point this out a lot he made a beautiful creation Our, th this planet this this little, this blue ball spinning in this vast universe, small dot <laughs> in, yeah. in the big picture, and it's just teeming with life and beauty and blessing all over. Everything we look at, if we, if we can see it with, 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 with clear eyes, everything is beautiful mm -hmm. and it, and 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 there's not a uh, uh, by our definition there's not a perfect tree we wouldn't even want they wouldn't look good we wouldn't like to see a million perfect trees all look the same mm -hmm. <laughs> we wouldn't like to see you know uh, a thousand hills and mountains that all look the same mm -hmm. we would not like to see rivers that run perfectly straight we would not like that mm -hmm. God knows what we like mm -hmm. and he created that for us oh, for uh, the, the Bible says uh, Paul told Timothy he says God gave us all things freely to enjoy freely that was with love mm -hmm. when you give freely you're giving with love That's good. asking nothing back just because of who he is love did that I noticed you one place uh, you stepped out of the car and here's this big open field it looks like a savanna you know yeah where the wolves run and elk and stuff like that and it's just big. And you got out and you saw this one solitary flower in this vast sea of grass, oh, yeah. really. Uh -huh. It's one flower all by himself. What was that one flower doing right there? One tiny flower. Yeah. Love did that. Yeah. Love did that. And when you were when you when you noticed it and you were drawn to it, you were being loved by God. And mm -hmm. they come because that's who God is. Mm -hmm. And and we're saying these things because because it's good to to be aware it's good to remember the 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 character the heart the personality the motivations of god it's all together lovely and when you see him as he is you notice not only the beauty of the things we're describing but the beauty of his love and commitment to us mm -hmm. it's nothing like a human commitment mm -hmm. um, a human type of love does not would not cannot bring forth that kind of beauty mm -hmm. into existence only a only the supreme divine creator who is love himself mm. could do that and only someone like that could save us so gracefully as he did gwen says it's like he's romancing uh mm -hmm. it's it's like he's romancing your heart yeah and you know and and many people you know uh, reject him, mm -hmm. but he doesn't stop. He just keeps giving, yeah, freely to enjoy. Oh, and then um, Zena said, "All creation speaks." I, I think that is so it's true. true. I saw Very it true. so clear at Yellowstone. His glory surrounds us, and even like in non-impressive places, you still see his 
the specialness that he did just for you. Kim said, I remember I was having a tough day and looked out my window. He put two beautiful goldfinches on my shepherd's hook. It never happened before, but it was like a kiss from him. So, absolutely. That, when, you, when, when things like that happen, when you see that, that kind of beauty, that kind of like, what makes, what, what would even make a goldfinch, <laughs> you know? Yeah, they're because beautiful you don't little need birds. Them, but you, you don't, but they're so gorgeous. And yeah, they, and, it, and when you see one, you you feel like you're being loved. Mm -hmm. You know, if we see a hummingbird in our yard, mm -hmm. don't you always feel special? It's yeah. like, and and you become more aware. Love did that. You know, what what was that hummingbird doing here? Love did that. Yeah. And uh, I remember when we were walking on a trail up in the mountains of uh, Arizona. And uh, we were walking on the trail. It was the, a you know, trail that people uh, walked on commonly oh, yeah. out there. And we saw this this bluff up up to the side. We were looking up at it. And you said, "Let's climb that." And there we went, and we climbed up there, and we sat on top, and we were watching all watching the people go by every once in a while. And we were sitting there looking, and then we looked to the side of us, and there was this beautiful flower there, and we're like, "Why would God bother to put a flower right there?" And one of us said, maybe it's just in case somebody climbed up here, you know, mm -hmm. and you feel, you feel loved. And what, 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 the reason we're using these kinds of descriptions tonight is because, um, cause God is love. And I think when we look at it that way, we can see what his character is. Mm -hmm. And as we see that more, it takes away these false images of God that we have, a, a vindictive God, a punishing. a punishing God, a hateful God. Uh, he hates nobody. He hates nobody. Mm -hmm. it, he would see, it, he can't deny himself. Even those who are without faith, faithless, mm -hmm. he says he still stays the same. He cannot deny himself. That's good. And, and I love that. His love abides forever. He's loved us with an everlasting love. Now, what that, that doesn't mean that everybody just lives in that everybody gets to experience uh, unicorns and rainbows, uh, because it's the awareness of that love that makes mm -hmm. the beauty of life spring up in us, mm -hmm. and and it's the it's the knowing of Him mm -hmm. is where the enjoyment of life, the heaven on earth experience comes, mm -hmm. and uh, and and this is where when you see Him that way, then you can really begin to move move together with him in a relationship of somebody that you're coming to know now because mm -hmm. this this creator, this God is very personal and he loves us. Mm -hmm. And that's when you start to get this personal thing where you start he starts speaking to you things either by whatever. He speaks in many ways. People say some people say they've heard an audible voice. I don't think I ever have, but I get I hear thoughts and sentences. Mm -hmm. I hear uh, and many times it's a goldfinch or something like yeah. that. You know, he speaks in so many ways, but it's very, always very intimate, personal. It feels mm -hmm. like a friend, somebody who's for you, mm -hmm. somebody who's with you in this. And, and no matter what, it's not just words anymore. You really know that he's with you. Mm -hmm. Like Jesus said, he, he, he knew that. He said, you guys are all going to leave me tonight when he knew he was going to be crucified. He says, but I will not be alone. I will not be alone. Mm. Love did that. Yeah. Corey said, she said, I don't know why I'm struggling so much tonight. After all the years, I am having a hard time tonight with myself. And, you, and that's, you're, 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 you're not alone because a lot of people are doing that and it's very common. A hard time with, 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 with ourselves. And, and, mm. and a lot of that is... Um, um, it's, it's hard for, for, for a lot of us to... To, to, to know and trust that love where we can just rest in that. Mm -hmm. Rest in that and understand that if no matter what you ha ever could do, mm -hmm. it would not change God's love and commitment, mm -hmm. care, His kindness, His patience mm -hmm. with you. We, um, a lot of um, religious ideas and the images of God that we that men have made up of God have given most of us the idea that we're always trying to measure up, that we're never good enough and we're mm -hmm. always striving to be and trying to do better. And we don't pray enough. We don't do mm -hmm. love enough. Even we don't, don't hear God. We don't know we, all these things. There's always, we don't, we don't, we don't, we need, we need, we need. And, uh, and, uh, we want to, in fact, 
in just one moment, I want to I want to pray for you, Corey. And uh, um, but there is a, a liberty knowing that God is what we're talking about, knowing that He's love. That's why we're focusing on this name of God. Yeah. God has many different names in the Bible that describe who He is. John wrapped it all up together in his revelation and said, this is who God is. God is love. And when you come down to it, everything funnels down to that. Mm. Father, uh, you know how to do for Corey what, what nobody else knows, knows, knows how to do. You know, you're greater. If, if our hearts condemn us, you are greater than our hearts. Mm-hmm. Um, you know how to, to rise up and to speak and to bless our soul. Mm-hmm. You know how to to override all the, 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 the things of the soul that torment us. And, yeah. and uh, you're bigger than all that. And greater are you that's mm-hmm. in us and in Corey. So, Father, I'm trusting you. I am trusting you and asking you to do a rescue in this situation, yeah. to do something that I don't know how to do. And, and Corey doesn't know how to do. Mm-hmm. If we did, we would just do it. <laughs> but we trust in you. Yes. And, I'm, and I'm trusting you, my Father, to love her in a way that overwhelms her. And even right now, let there be like a springtime happening in her soul that the winter is over and past Mm -hmm. and the fall has begun and the birds are starting to sing in her heart and the sun is starting to shine in her heart and the dark has been at her back, but the sun is on her face. And I thank you, Father, for blessing, Mm -hmm. blessing our friend tonight Mm -hmm. in only the way you can. Thank you. Let your goodness happen. Yes. Amen. What did uh... Kim said? I can relate, Corey. I've been, I've been having a hard time with myself too, and lots of anger over past hurts mm. and abuse. I tell Daddy, please take the anger and help me forgive. Yeah, and 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 Corey said it's awful today. She said, so... I'm full of self sabotage at 51. Mm-hmm years old, I want to be free from finding disgust in what my d- daddy created and loves. What a battle. Yeah, yeah. I, we, I, most of us can can uh, sympathize. I would say I had a similar, I had a bad day on Saturday. And, 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 and what Kim is saying is true for me. I don't, I don't think this is for everybody. But, um, you know, when you've had a, like, a history or a past of abuse, there are protective walls that come up and self, I would say self-destructive habits mm. come out of that. And you heal over time and gradually God heals those things. But there's times when things come up and it pu- it's like it pushes on the wound that's not quite healed yet. And, and you know, you just kind of have a really... It brings you back to that, that, that old, old familiar place. Familiar. And I know what it feels like to say, I'm so sick of my flesh because you've at least for me, was feeling like, well, I'll never change. You know, yeah. I'll never get better. But it's just a lie. And the truth is exactly what you said, Corey, is that what God made so beautiful, we don't have to feel disgust. And, you know, I used to pray like, God, just take that thing out of me that wants to hurt myself or wants to think badly about. Just take it out. And, you know, Rick often talks about how God is weaving his ways so he into us. So we have these history. It's our story. It's just right. our story. We have these things that had happened to us when we were younger or even recently. And he's weaving beautiful perfection into those imperfect, painful, wounded. And it makes it something good. Yeah. And that's when something good can yeah. come from something that was meant to destroy. Yeah. And I mean, I, I even really... On Saturday, I felt that feeling of I'm going to tear the whole ha- walls down. I'm just going down and everything's going to go with it. That is how I lived my life for a really long time. And I recognize it was almost strange because I haven't really felt that way in a long time. But it it it's still a part of my history. And God looks at me with love, understanding and compassion and he knows that it's not always a quick easy thing to get out of years and years of training yourself this one way but 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 to recognize we are growing there is yeah. some and, and, and it gets better as a thing is that yeah. is that those those days when you feel like that they become fewer and farther between and so mm-hmm. and then they become the exception rather than the rule right and, and so, the fact that you have a day like that 
the lie that comes is like, oh, I'll always be this way because this is how I always used to be. Yeah. Well, I thought thought I was over it. Yeah. But there it is. But it, that's just a lie because the truth is you've had more good days than bad days. At least in my case, strung together. So that and, can't and it be. Gets like that. that it never. What, what did Corey just say? Something really good. It says. Okay. Uh, Let me see. Um, no. Keep okay. going. Keep going. More. There. He's so gentle, and he knows how. We can't understand his patience with us. Yeah. That's true because it's totally based on him, not about how much we deserve that patience. Uh -huh. And it doesn't. It never runs out because he, that's. That's who he is again there too. That's part of love. Love is patient. And yeah. That's him. Uh, even if we're not, he is. And that's the thing. Because we need his patience. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not our patience it's that he's demanding. To, it's almost hard to comprehend that kind of patience because we have no patience with ourselves. Yeah. That the idea that he could be that patient. And I, I really like what Kim is saying right now too. She said, I've stopped trying to change myself. Stop trying, period. And that is a wonderful place. That's when I started to get it. Mm -hmm. When I finally just stopped and I found out that mm -hmm. me stopping my striving to change, it did not cut my relationship with God. It, it made it more real. Mm. It did not make me a worse person or cause me to sin more. <laughs> yeah. It actually did the opposite because I was receiving grace and love. Right. And uh, it's uh, almost like perfection comes in in those yes. moments. And you can't go back to sinning because his perfection is coming into you. There's only up, mm -hmm. there's only upward movement, not downward. Right. It to does, sin. it gets better. Yeah. Um, but it's not, you know, it's, it, it, you know, you hear a lot about how people like, yeah, one day, you know, somebody touched me and boom, you know, I've never been the same since. Well, in one sense, that's true. But, but, but really the way that he does it is he's, he unites our thoughts with his, we, it's, he's God working in us, causing us to will and do right. his good pleasure. And it's a growth thing and it's a growth in our relationship or knowing him more. That's why Jesus says, he says, if you're, if you're tired of working so hard, if you're tired of striving and you're, you're burdened yeah, down with this, yeah. he says, come and I'll give you rest. Come and, and take my yoke upon you and you'll find rest for your souls because I'm meek and I'm humble. So come learn of me. He said, and the good thing about his yoke is that when he says, take my yoke upon you, he's carrying the whole thing. So you don't yeah. have any weight in this. This is what is so good oh. about understanding the, the grace, the grace of God, the graciousness <laughs> of not just what he did. Of course it was gracious what he did, but, but he did it because he is gracious. He's graceful mm -hmm. and he's full of grace. And, uh, and, the liberty, the freedom, the joy finally came to me when I knew that I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to get better because God loved me so much that he made the way through Jesus Christ that, that I could be complete, I could be blessed, I could be favored, I could be loved if I never got any better because none of it had anything to do with me. Mm. If I never got any better if I never quit doing the 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 unchristlike un things I still did mm -hmm. if I never stopped those things got mm -hmm. never quote got the sin out of my life if I never stopped those things it would not change a thing mm -hmm. and if I ever could <laughs> overcome all those things and become this perfect specimen of a Christian child of God, which there is like no such robot. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that wouldn't change it either. It wouldn't. Uh, because it's based upon God's, the joy before him was us. Mm -hmm. That's why Jesus could go to the cross and it says for the joy set before right. him, he endured it. We were that joy. Yeah. He loved us and loves us. I, I have this picture of him walking the streets of Calvary. You know, there was this big celebration going on. Passover feast was happening in Jerusalem as he walked this walk, you know, and they all saw a criminal because he was going to get 
executed. So they they were like making a spectacle of him. But I see him so committed and committed to me. He keeps going. You know, at any time he could have stopped and said, enough of this. I can show you all who I am. Right. But he kept, he was so committed. That he was, I just imagine him saying, Judy needs me. Judy's going to need me. Rick is going to need me. Corey's going to need me. Mm-hmm. Kim is going to need me one day. And so he kept going on that awful walk and did what only he could do to be there for us and for us to know that he knows he carried it all on him so he knows what it feels like he knows what that sin and that self-destruction and that self-hatred is disgust he knows he felt it all and so we can always rest assured that we have someone who sympathizes with our weaknesses because he he's experienced that and he, he and he knows yeah and he did the, the the most incredible thing of sending the holy spirit to reside in us so that our imperfect selves could join with his perfection and we could become one mm-hmm. so we would always know we have someone and that perfection is his love in our lives right. it's not our performance. It's not what we do. That's right. a fable. There's is right. no such thing. Man made that up. It'd be like you'd become a robot, like yeah. this perfectly and the, shaped and say everything perfect. Like it's such a a, a false Yeah. It's part of the world system to get you to lust for more. Like I've got to yeah. have a better body. I've got to have a more better job. I've got to mm. do this. I got to do So be you're a always Christian, on this. More. Yeah, so but it's a it's it's not. Um, it's not something that you ever. And even that get. word "perfect." What is that really? I mean, stop and think about it. what does it. What does what does it look like? Someone says, "Well, it's the absence of flaws." Yeah, but but that's so subjective. What is a what is a flaw? That's not the real definition. The definition of perfection biblically. Yeah. I say this a lot. If you look up in the Bible, it tells you what perfection is. Look in the New Testament. Everywhere you see the word "perfect" or "perfection," it's talking about love. First exactly. Corinthians 13, Matthew 5, all, all of that. It's all talking about the God kind of, that's the only perfect thing there is. Let me show you a more excellent way. Yeah. Love is patient. Love is kind. Who is that? You could say God is patient. Yeah. God is kind. God, God does, 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 uh, he's just, he's, he is the perfect one. That's why he could create what he did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he's not perfect because he doesn't do things wrong, even though he doesn't in our even in our definition. He's perfect because he's love, Aww. and love is automatically perfect. I saw that Ted said something. Oh, somebody said not receiving our audio. Uh oh. Is that anybody else? I think other people are hearing us. Um, Ted said, "If God could hate, he would hate hate." There you go. I totally agree with that because. I hate hate. <laughs> uh, like if he could hate. He would hate hate. And I mean, and so hate. what does he do there again? And he doesn't come to annihilate hate. We got a uh, lot of people in the world trying to annihilate hate, but not <laughs> but not having any love to replace it with. Mm-hmm. And so what God does is he brings in love. Mm-hmm. Romans 5, 5, the love of God was poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit that, that dwells in us. Uh-huh. And so he did that. And then what happens then the hate removes and the light of God removes darkness. Mm. You know, I, I've been thinking a lot about that, that, that how you are interacting with people, like even if you have the right theology or the best grace message, if you are punching people with it or yeah. trying to one up someone with it, you really are missing everything. That's it's, why. The Bible says knowledge puffs you up, Uh but love builds you up. Uh, What I find so fascinating about it is when you meet different kinds of people, people are so different. And so you might say something, it doesn't Mm -hmm. resonate with them at all. But if you find the thing that resonates, there's a way to say it 
that they can actually hear and receive. Yeah. And love does that. Love looks for that. Takes the time, yeah, and to really... we the, there's they we want people to we want to speak to people in a voice that they can hear. And Jesus said, "My sheep hear my voice," because his voice is one that can be received by anyone. Mm -hmm. Not not the way a lot of us Christians are talking, but the way that the way that he speaks to yes. us. Uh, as Hebrews 1 says, God used to speak to us through the prophets, but now in this last day, he's spoken to us by his son. And he said, and my sheep hear my voice. Yeah, He's got this way, because he's love. He mm -hmm. is love and he speaks from that that perspective. Mm -hmm. He's he's not trying to to um, push us into a religion mm -hmm. <laughs> or, or, or real, really even to a box of thought or idea. Mm -hmm. It's just his whole, he is love. So that's, that's what he does. He just loves and loves mm -hmm. and loves and loves. And that changes everything else. Right. I, I know I have said this in the past and I've heard many people say this is, it's so hard to hear. It's so hard to hear the Holy Spirit. And you would always say, well, if you believe it's hard, then it will well, be hard. Well, that's why it is, but we think it's hard, yeah. So I had a couple things happen uh, over, like, I would say this last month, where I purposely would go out and say, Lord, I need to hear from you. And I like took a long walk and came back and I'm like, didn't hear a word, didn't hear anything. And then I would say like maybe 20 minutes later, you prayed for me and God answered through that prayer. But I wanted to hear it on that walk and yeah. I didn't necessarily hear it on that walk. But, um, you know, the other day I was doing uh, some just some pr private prayer time. And I said, Lord, will you just speak to me now? Like, just, I'm, I don't need anything big. Because I, because what I was saying was, it seems like when I need the answer, that's what I want to hear right now. But and we kind of put a demand on yeah, that. We want but, you to speak this way at this time. <laughs> quickly. And so I can hear it, right? So I said, just let me hear, like, when it's not important. Like, when it's not a big thing. And it was like, I love you. He said, he was like, he was saying, I adore you. You are you bring a smile to my face. You are, you know, sunshine to me. I am so proud of you. You are, you know, a delight to my soul. And Rick is right about everything. <laughs> about everything. No. <laughs> Actually, he did tell me something that I was disagreeing with you on, that he said, no, Rick has the right perspective on this. And he was explaining that. It's the perspective of God's love. There's a couple of things I want. Okay. First of all, I like Gwen's thing because it's very uh, okay. appropriate. It says, the Lord told me not to attach value to how you act, what you look like, what you own. None of these things gives you value. That's you already are valuable. That's the world's way. And and Kim said, said a, a, something there, and she said something right there, and then her last statement before that, um, that I want to address because this is important. So she says, I don't know how to love myself and extend myself grace. And um, I want to know that I'm, I'm, that I'm, I'm valuable. Um, there is, and I'm not, and, and I, and I, and I know that Kim and the people watching this are not doing it this way, but there's a way that the world tries to, tries to give value to themselves and tries to love themselves. And, um, and that's this, this world's thing of puffing themselves up like, I'm fabulous. I'm I'm awesome. I'm you know I I love me and and you know I'm this and I'm that and and that's their way of dealing with this common common shame that humanity carries and can't get rid of. That's why they're always trying to look better, be trying to be better, and and, and so they do. But it, it's it's false. It doesn't it doesn't work at all. The way that it works is simply knowing what we're talking about tonight, coming to know that. That's why Jesus says, come with me and learn of me mm -hmm. because I'm meek. I'm humble. I'm, you know, I'm love. I'm patient. I'm caring. I'm, and he, and so it's when, when we knew, when we find the, out that God loves us regardless and love created us. Mm -hmm. Nothing can create it. No man's going to be able to create mm -hmm. this. <laughs> Love created us, mm -hmm. and that made us valuable by virtue of who created us. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he, he loves me finally made me realize, there again, like I'm saying, nothing I do is going to make me more valuable 
God will always love me like this. And and I, and I want I say this because I totally relate, as we all do. I totally relate because I spent so many many decades of my life trying to become more valuable, valuable to people, mm -hmm. trying much to become more valuable to God. God, I want you to use me. God, I want to I want to I want to, you know, find that costly anointing so 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 you know I can do good things for you, you know, all that while so I can do what's pleasing in your sight, you know, all those kind of things. And so all those ideas make us feel not valuable because we never measure up. Mm. Measure up. And so when we look at God, the more we look at God, mm -hmm. and honestly, those of us that are in that situation of just really um, you know, hard on ourselves that way, we probably need to not not look at a lot of other things, even in Christianity, mm -hmm. other than the character of God, His absolute pure love, and 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 I'll tell you why it's hard to believe it, even though you hear it said, mm -hmm. is because this love is too good to be true. Mm -hmm. It blows us away just to mm -hmm. and 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 even though I'm talking about it now. I know that I cannot comprehend with my mind how deep this thing is yeah, and, and, and how far it goes, how infinite it is, but I'm glad it is. Mm. But, but accepting a love and it throws away all these, all the venge, vengeance of God, all the punishings of God, all the, all the, the, the dark images that were created of God, this kind of love that makes, makes God shows the beauty of God. Mm -hmm. And the beauty of God, like somebody said, creation declares his glory. These things that love has created, they're reflections of who he is. Mm -hmm. That's why that's why there's even such a thing mm -hmm. that we recognize as beauty. Mm -hmm. There would not be anything beautiful if it weren't for a beautiful heart that's giving and loving always, 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 mm -hmm. always, always. And he gave us, he poured his love in us by the Spirit. And the Bible says the Spirit was given to us so we can know what's freely given to us. So, yeah, yeah we, we, we struggle for it's a time. The, it's the Spirit's job yes, to, to convince your heart. Because mm -hmm. we both had this experience. We didn't know each other at the time. But when you would hear, God loves you, I it would be like 10 words. Like, ding, God loves you. I'd think, so, so what? what? Yeah. Like, I have all these problems. I have issues. It, it was like it. It, it was just, a far away love. Yeah. It was, so God's sitting in His chair, loving me. And meanwhile, back at the ranch, I'm struggling here. But like <laughs> I feel like the the convincing of the heart yes. has changed right. everything for me. Not just the. I know God loves me. Of course, He loves everybody. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, I've got to fix this. I've got to do this. It's not that. It's that. Everything changes. I remember I remember when I was learning about the grace of God and I the Lord said to me, sit down. And I usually was very involved in church. Very, I, I was very active to kind of get out of myself, right? And I remember just thinking the worst possible thing would be that I would become a couch potato and I would just watch TV all day. And I remember saying to the Lord, but Lord, I'm just going to, it just be awful. I'll just watch TV all day long and blah, blah, blah. He goes, I'll, I'll watch with you. I'll sit down mm. and watch with you. And you know what? I don't watch TV all day long anymore, you know, but I did for a while watch mm. TV. And, and if you did, there's nothing wrong with nothing, it. <laughs> nothing. I think I was so afraid that I would get stuck in that. Mm -hmm. But with him, it's like, it's okay to rest it's okay yeah. like kim is saying to stop trying 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 just sit down because in the hindsight when i look back god was sitting with me but he wasn't just sitting with me letting me stay that way forever he was sitting with me and convincing my heart yeah. and convincing my heart till one day i was singing in the car i was driving to work and i noticed that I was singing for the first time in a long time in like a couple years <laughs> and I was singing and I knew that something had moved and yeah. changed and you know that was sort of the, the the beginning of the end of that uh that depression of, I like uh, what you said that, that that it's 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 okay how you know 
I'm, I'm just I'm just sitting here. It's okay. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, a lot of time people get we're striving to give ourselves grace, and then we can put on top of that we condemn ourselves for trying so hard because we know that's not the answer either. <laughs> then and you're then, stuck. But, but yeah. you know what? You can say, God, you know, I know I'm really, really, you know, trying to accept this. He says, it's okay. You know, well, I know I shouldn't be trying so hard. It's okay. Because love does that. It's mm-hmm. always, I, I, I've never, but God, God is, is, his assurance is always anything that I've ever been or done. It's like, it's okay. Because love does that. Yeah. Love does that. And love is, Big enough for that, and I want to. I wanted to see. Um, Down, Kim. I think back up uh, now. Yeah, this is. No, I guess you're right. But I wanted to uh, bring out something that something else that Kim just said because this is good and it's helpful um, to people. Um, which one was it? Um, yeah. Uh, Okay. I think we already did those. We've moved on. So anyway, the, what I want to bring out is is that these comments that people are making now, these are common and and it's helpful and it, and I'm glad that I'm glad that we have this opportunity this this format so we can communicate like this yeah. because it brings up it brings up points like that that all of this that we're doing trying to measure up even doing that with love mm-hmm. with with God yeah. It's still, it's like, it's okay. I know where you're at. So he's not condemning us and like, come on, you're doing it wrong. You know, yeah. he's, 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 he's love. And that love is, uh, it gives freedom. Mm-hmm. It gives freedom to mess up. Mm. It gives some, this is the love that's so big and so wide. He's not calling us to walk a tight line here because what he did for us with Jesus, putting this whole thing together uh, with us and him we don't need that tight line anymore. That's so good. Is is this the comment you were talking about? Like, oh, I'm not doing what I should. Mm-hmm. Read my Bible or do more. Right. So you my think mind. it's, it's so your it's fault. fault, and just all those things along that um, along those lines of 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 putting it on us. So that's we, when you know when it feels like the weight is on your shoulders. Then then that's not you, the weight goes on him. And, and he'll take care of it, right? Mm-hmm. I think that feeling of burden, that's how I was feeling when I had that hard day. was mm-hmm. like, I. it was all on me. Well, it's really not all on me. Okay, this is really good from Gwen. Okay. When I was too tired and disappointed to pray or read my Bible, the Lord said, just listen to worship music and let me encourage you. It's like listening to music is so effortless. So effortless. That's, that's really good. And here's another thing is God knows what works for you, how you hear and receive and yeah. stuff like that. So yeah. with me, he might just say, turn on the football game and let's watch this together. Yeah. Or you know, whatever. Yeah. But he's just that big. He's that, he's just that loving and that, that personal. Now there was another comment and under he's that. Not, he's not just, pr- he's not as like pressed, pressed as we are to mm-hmm. fix the situation. Mm-hmm. He's much more like, like you said, he has a lot of room. Well, and because that's not his agenda either so much. He, his, he wants, he's, 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 he's love. And really love fixed, fixed it. Mm-hmm. And all the other things, the externals, how we act, the, you know, our lifestyle, the, our faith, all that stuff, those get affected by the love. Galatians mm-hmm. 5, 6, how does faith even work? Faith works by love. People struggling. I'm trying to believe God. I'm trying to trying to embrace this. I'm trying to mm-hmm. you know make this real to myself. And it says, "Come and learn of me." It says, "Faith works by love." His love. Mm-hmm. And so, so you know, this is why we're so um, we're basically a one note ministry. Everything funnels to who yeah. God is. God is love because that is the truth. Right. That really will make us make us free. Yes, He is so loving. So, um, an interesting Corey thing. said, something good must be around the corner. There always is. I had jumped on Facebook really hoping and asking God to meet me. And as soon as I jumped on, another Grace friend was La- was La- friends live was on. Not. But not, right? I'm sorry it made it worse. Oh. I would never have stayed on a live like that and felt like I was just staying 
to have another excuse that God's grace uh, was too, was too far. far from my reach. And then you two popped up. I was tempted to feel guilty to just leave because I was hoping the grace on this Grace Ministries Live would find me. Oh my, I just had, had to, to come, come and get, get some love. love. That's our theme song, right? <laughs> Yeah, they Come and get your know love. That. I, you know, that's one thing. One thing we've got is 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 the the word of of God, who is love, and and and, and that good news, and nothing yeah. but nothing but because Kim, God's not sending out any bills. Kim said, "Yes, weight goes on him." Mm, isn't this good? Gwen said, "I've forgotten how good God is. He's so he's loving. so loving, and he keeps amazing with his love." He's gentle. He's, he's love. love. Yes, faith works only by love. They didn't love me didn't over love there. Me. <laughs> well, we love you. <laughs> we love you. <laughs> and God loves you, you know. And I that's think, the love of God that mm -hmm. starts to flow through us more, that people don't have to yeah. be anything for us to love them anymore. That's that's that perfect love. Mm -hmm. Where did this come from? I didn't used to like anybody. <laughs> right. And I do think that what you're going through, especially, Corey, what you're sharing is... Something that is going to be used for good in the future oh, always, or when always. you're talking to someone or ministering to someone. It's really your your walk, like your crucible, your place of meeting God. And that will help someone. Our best else. ministry or our best way of blessing uh, seems to come from our our struggles, our, our personal experiences. We have, we always have a story that relates somehow. Uh -huh. And those things that seem so hard at one time and were, they become tools. They become things to bless others with yeah. now. It's like he made it into something good. Yeah. Like he'll, he'll make it into something good. And what it does, because love really listens to people. It doesn't try and fix people. It just it listens. Mm -hmm. And one way you can listen is when you've had a similar experience. You can listen in a way that maybe someone who hasn't ever had that experience might not be able to relate or really hear or really understand. Mm -hmm. And it's not to say you can't r relate to people who've gone through different things than you, but it's just, I think it's a nice thing to know that someone else understands yeah and has been there yeah you know? it is and that's why and that's how god makes everything work for our good we don't like those hard things at all mm -hmm. we're not even supposed to i don't think but but they always become something good a good question right there okay gwen your question question of the of the, of the night right here no this is just one of many questions of the night um how come the bible says he hates though like people who do wicked things or Esau, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Well, on that, that situation, we know that Jacob was chosen for certain things. So Jacob, Esau became the lesser in that sense, as far as the choice of God. But he does use the word hate. And I've looked it up. Um, I'll, here's what I say about that. Um, number one, as I quoted before, in Hebrews um, 1 says, verse 1, says, God, who in various ways and different times spoke to us in times past through the prophets, talking, talking about what was written in the Old Testament scriptures by the prophets, has in these days spoken to us by the Son. And he said, and it's a new and living way. Now, the new and living way did not change God's personality. He always was love, but it revealed his true personality because Hebrews also says that the types and shadows of that old covenant, Old mm -hmm. Testament, if you will, uh, uh, says it was an, uh, a shadow of things, but it was not the very replica, the very image of the things of God. But Jesus is the exact image mm -hmm. of the things of God. This is what would come to us through the Son. Also, in, in John chapter 1, verse 18, this is what I always come, come to. It says, no one, now think about this, after all the, the scriptures that we read, especially in the Old Testament and all that, no one has seen God at any time. time. But the Son. Hmm? But the Son, only begotten Son, who's with the Father, He has declared Him to us. Mm -hmm. So whenever there's a confusion about that, and we like, mm -hmm. like He says, well, I hated Esau or stuff like that, remember that they all knew in part and saw in part mm -hmm. for whatever reason. 
um, well, there was a, a very particular reason. There was a veil over them that's not done away in, in, except in Christ. Mm -hmm. Jesus unveils so, and what he demonstrated, what he taught about the Father. What did mm -hmm. he say? Did he ever say, God hates you? He said, he says, your Father loves you. Mm -hmm. Your father cares for you. Your father, uh, you know, it's all. It was always the father, the father, the father. The father loves the son. Yeah. The father's not impatient with the son. The mm -hmm. father, you know, and it was always about. He talked about it. He demonstrated it mm -hmm. everywhere he went. He did not before he healed people. He didn't ask them if they deserved it, if they've had read their Bible lately, or any, you know, any of that, that kind of stuff. He just gave because mm -hmm. that's what love does. And, and John got that revelation that when we saw the son who declared who the father really is, John said, God is love. That's yeah. something nobody had said before. Mm -hmm. But John saw it because of Jesus, saw who God really was. Mm -hmm. When the law didn't give us a picture of it, the prophets didn't give us a picture of God, Jesus gave us the exact image of God mm -hmm. and he loved showing a God who loves mm -hmm. the whole world. Wow. Yeah, the, the love for the whole world is a big love. It's a, it's a really big love. And you know, it's so funny because the, you know, when you talk about um, God didn't so hate sin that he came to save the world. He didn't so mm -hmm. hate our behavior that he came to save us. It says he so loved us, loved us. because actually love is more powerful than hate. Mm -hmm. And so he brings the light in and that wicked way or that, you know, bad behavior it just falls off because the light is shining and it and is big and it embraces us. That's really how healing happens and how change happens is the light comes in and the darkness just That's why God did it the right way by doing what he From did the inside, in, in, inside uh, because the law of the prophets where it says all these other things it was the outside yeah thing. and it never did work martin luther king jr had saw it so clear in some of the things that he said that's when he said hate only begets hate so just by hate even just by hating hate that's yeah. not enough right you have to love the person <laughs> if you notice that you can see it in culture even today is there's a lot of people who hate really bad things mm -hmm. but their hate isn't changing the, the no, people's it's behavior. making it worse, right? It's actually, you know, they it says that um, what the law excites sin, or, yeah. or like, so you're you're putting this hate on this, and it actually increases it. So mm -hmm. it, if you really wanted to change someone, it has to change from the inside out. The only way is is love. The yeah, only that, that's so. You know, God knows best. Uh -huh. What he did was the best way, and what he did worked. Mm -hmm. It actually changed even someone like me and is changing me. And so if the other way, if it was still about, uh, still about, uh, do good and not evil is the way to do it. Uh -huh. Well, that's the tree of knowledge of good and evil that got us in trouble the whole time. So it has nothing to do with that. Yeah. He, in fact, the ax was laid to the root of that tree. So we don't have to live by the knowledge of good and evil anymore. And that was, of course, you know, Adam lived with that with that, with that shame. Hey, yeah. my friend Geraldine, our friend Geraldine is Hi, here. Jer. She says, I love how you share and have shared for years about the love overcoming our pain. Mm -hmm. Oh, and our pain falling off. You are my rock star friend. Thank you. I think hey, she was now, talking to me. I'm a rock star, <laughs> put your game on, go play. <laughs> She's talking to both of us. I think she was talking to you. You're the rock star. No, you're the rock star. I called you a you rock star You were today. like, um, Aero Aerosmith, uh, what's his name? Steven Tyler. When when Rick was young, he was really thin and had long, straight black hair. And big lips. And big lips. And people thought he was Steven Tyler. And he loves Steven Tyler. He, he, I mean, he doesn't love, but he likes him a lot. But, but now I like my life much better than I would yeah, like his. <laughs> true, true. Okay, um... Where he said Esau sold his inheritance, not desiring the blessing. The blessing is a shadow of God hating that anyone would choose to perish than receive His love. Mm, I, I could, yeah, I could go with that. Um, um, that's that's actually pretty good. 
Um, but you know, some of the things in the Old Testament, and you, you run into a, a lot of. I never thought of that that way. Yeah, yeah that's so yeah. interesting. And, and there again, he hates things, not people. Why? Because because he loves people, and so does he hate sin? Well, yeah, he does. That it's wasn't hurtful to us. It's harmful yeah, to that's us. That's why it's not because it just it broke his rules. <laughs> hey, yeah. those were my rules, and you broke them. That's yeah. not why he hates sin. He hates sin because it hurts us, and he loves us. He doesn't want. He doesn't like anything that hurts us. <laughs> Corey said, oh, you two are awesome. God has me laughing after all that. I'm so glad. <laughs> Yay! That's so good. It's good to but laugh. But we, you know, we really believe in the, the prayer when we call on God to help us in ways that we don't know how to help or rescue ourselves. Mm. That's, that's what he's really good at. Yeah. And, um, and so, uh, you know, that, that love that we know that he has, it, it, uh-huh. it, it helps us to have faith when we pray that God's going to bless the people that we do. And also, I like like when we're in a, a, a live meeting, a church meeting somewhere, or a home group, or and we're ministering, teaching, and people want prayer. I feel like that's a divine appointment. I feel like God wanted wants us to pray for that particular thing, and and it's a divine it's an honor you that we actually it's get an to. Honor. That to be we a get part to, of it. Right. Yeah. That we actually get to touch God on this thing yeah. and 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 receive goodness in that situation. So he Geraldine, our... Geraldine said, you guys match. So cute. Almost. I'm navy blue. I'm black. And we were told that navy blue and black doesn't go together. But, but it, it looks does pretty tonight. good. Yeah. It does tonight with us. All right. We need to go. We do. Thank you for joining us. We've been away for a while, and so it's nice to get back and start uh, doing our e-churches. We, like, we, we enjoyed and, being back live again tonight. Love yeah. did this. Right? Love, love did this. Love did this. Love did that. For me. Um, so we, um, if, those, if you're not real familiar with this, rickmanis.com. We've got lots of other resources. There's free stuff. There's videos. There's, there's, blo- there's a blog that Judy writes. There's... Um, uh, once in a while, Heaven on Earth University. We have Heaven on Earth University, which is in-depth courses with a with a uh, curriculum format. Uh-huh. Uh, has a lot of different. Uh, we have books for sale, and we have our meeting schedule where we travel. Schedule. So if we're near you, or uh, we want you to come to our meeting, and if we're not, we want to see you. Uh, you know if. Uh, uh, if you've if you've got a church, we would love to come and and, and speak there. We always like seeing our friends. We got a, we've got a lot of Facebook friends that we haven't even seen yet, still face to face. Now there's a lot of them we meet as we go. We'll run into people and they'll say, "Hey, I'm so and so. I'm your Facebook friend." And we're like, "Yeah, there's a face," you know. Yeah. Uh, so that or 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 it doesn't even have to be a church. We go to home groups. The uh-huh. Home groups are wonderful. They're a, such a blessing. We just really. Get, have a good time in the word and with ministry. Sometimes uh, that's just, just really nice because you're more. It's more intimate and you can really talk and get really a few friends it. together. And we'll make it some way for us to be able to to make it. Just get a few friends together and let's have a good night around the things of God. It makes it easy. We're real easy. So remember, love did this. Love did this, and look at yourself in the mirror and say, "Love did that." God bless okay. you guys tonight. We sure love you. We believe in you. We do. And we'll see you next week, right? Okay. All right.